You know what this thing is? It's an important part of my workbench. Stay tuned and find out why. Oh, since I made the video for the bench, um, I bought myself a new joiner. So you won't see this in the video itself, but in the video you see me rubbing some wax on the joiner that I used. And I made that with paraffin wax and a soap mold. So they look like little uh, seashells. Since then I bought myself a mold that looks like uh, wood grain. And I don't know if you can see this, but it uh, looks like a block of wood. And I have these for sale on my site as well as some stickers and my hats and, and everything. So. Uh, Check it out and you'll get to see some of the work I've, I've been doing. And uh, here's the show. Enjoy it. To make my workbench top, I needed to do a lot of joining. So I wanted to make sure that the joiner was going to run smooth. I waxed it up really good and then I used an angle finder to set it at a perfect 90 degrees. Hey, I'm just working on my bench top, getting it ready to glue together. This is going to be a split top bench, so it's going to be made up of two separate slabs with a split in the middle. Right now I'm working on the back side, the back slab, and there were a few things that I wanted to share with you and talk about. One was uh, the fact that I was really worried that I was not going to have an, um, enough material to make the entire bench top the thickness that they wanted in, in the uh, bench crafted plans that I got. So what I did was with the back slab, I'm going to make it thinner. Uh, it's not going to take the abuse. It's not going to take the pounding that the front slab is going to take. It doesn't have a vise attached to it. Um, what I'll do is make a step down in the rails on the sides that will accommodate the two separate heights. And I'll, and I'll just m make sure that that's going to you know, be done well so that I have everything flat and, and true. And that, that helped me to make my material go a little further. I just got done gluing together the, the one half of the base for the bench. It went together really well and I'm about to glue the other half together. I wanted to show you guys some of the parts that go into it. Um, the legs have a barley twist into them. I, th I think this is the first bench I've ever seen with any kind of uh, decorative turning in the legs. And usually benches are just, uh, just have a square bulky base. 
where's the fun in that? I had to have some fun with it. The three legs went together really easily. I'm, I'm used to turning that rope design and a lot of different things. Uh, I use a router mill. Um, I'll show you how I use that. But um, the fourth leg that gets the bench crafted hardware for the leg vise ended up being very complex. It has lots of different parts that needed to be milled just so. It's a little bit over the top and a little bit wild, but hey, why not? The router mill that I use is from Legacy Woodworking. It's a pretty awesome machine. It's a three axis carriage that holds the router on a sled and you can use different uh, router bits depending on the profile that you're looking for. You can use it like a lathe or you can use it uh, to index uh, the gear system that it has and create a, a fluting uh, both tapered and straight and I, I use this for a lot of different uh, parts that I make. turn the piece round with a flat bottom bit and then I change out to a special bit that has a profile to the fluting that I want to add to the piece. By using the specialty bits and the indexing system, the, the, the gear system, you can change the pitch and the number of ropes that go around the post to uh, get a lot of different looks for what you want to make. Once I had all the legs with the, the rope design in them, I had to turn my attention to the leg that got the leg vise hardware into it, and so I had to route out a space for the hardware to be put into. I inlaid a square piece of stock into that opening that I milled out and then routed it out again to hold the leg vise hardware. I wanted to kind of beef it up in that section to make sure that the hardware had a lot to hold on to.
the tops were glued up, I flipped them upside down and made mortises to, f to sit down onto the tenons that were on the skirting or on the top of the legs. That was going to hold the bench in place really good. And I give a shout out to my pimp daddy, Matt Caron, my first 500. Thanks, Matt. Making the double dovetail is pretty straightforward. It's just a dovetail inside of a dovetail. So on the first tail that you make, you're going to lay out a second dovetail, and you want to make sure that the layout lines fall completely inside of that dovetail so that it'll make it easier for cutting out uh, the pins. like that leg vice hardware. That thing works so smoothly. It works so much nicer than any other vice that I have. So like I said before, this is a split top bench, meaning it's made up of two different slab tops, the back one being the thinner one that I made, and then the, the front one is the nice big chunky one. Um, in between is the split that I made out of walnut, a really pretty piece of walnut, and it has these openings for keeping your chisels or your saws in there, and you can remove that and use that opening to clamp pieces down to, or you can take it out and flip it around and drop it back down in there and use that to push against for planing or for working in for holding your work the bench dogs that i made i made out of uh, maple and walnut for these uh, what seven of them and then the one that's actually in the wagon vice itself i made out of a piece of curly maple with some maple it's really pretty um, but i had a few extras left over so i went ahead and i drilled one uh, I drilled a hole in it, and uh, I use that for putting my work light in, so I can get a rake light working, uh, shooting across my work. The uh, the leather that came with the benchcrafted hardware, I, I just wasn't a big fan of it. It's it's 
kind of this flimsy, rough stuff. And it, it probably would have worked fine, but I, I wanted something a little nicer. So I went and I found this Torino like suede brown. And it was, this is just in the scrap bin at the, at the leather store. So I got a couple scraps of it. R pretty cheap, but beautiful stuff. So I used that to line the, the wagon vise and the leg vise. And then that board that I showed you in the beginning of the video. Um, I, I make and design a lot of chairs. And I like to have the chairs out in the open to work on. And, and so that's what I use. It's kind of like a plank. And I'll show you the old version. It was just a piece of plywood that I put in uh, my vise. And then the chair can sit out here, out in open space, and I can get all the way around it. So I used that same leather and tacked it onto a piece of thick maple and put an indexing pin in here that I can put into the wagon vise. And that, that keeps it from uh, wiggling around laterally. And then I built this uh, screw out of uh, maple and a maple burl beautiful piece of maple burl and that threads down into the bench into a nut that's located underneath and then that holds this down really tight so I can go to town uh, with a mallet whatever I got to do and if I'm working on it it hold it out there to do like that so it can hold hold the chairs upside down and or flip it around any way I want to work on it. This chair is unfinished, uh, so this might end up being another video. So subscribe and stay tuned because I got a lot of videos coming that'll be a lot of fun. Um, uh, one of the other project videos that I'd like to do this year is the Moxon Vice. I meant to do that with this whole remodel, but I never got around to it. Um, so that'll be coming up later, and we're gonna make that to go with this, this bench. One of the other goodies that I have that goes with this bench is my saw vise and I use this for cutting and uh, sharpening the teeth in my back saws and that would be another video that I'd like to show you guys is how I make my wooden back back saws and I use this guy all the time a lot of fun so um, definitely stay tuned and subscribe did I go over the, the whole oh no I didn't go over the whole fast Hold fast. I had these things made. I have a set of four of them made by John Switzer out of Colorado, the Black Bear Forge. I'll put his info in the description of the, the video. These things are amazing. I, I used to get these the old uh, welded ones and I was breaking them all the time. They, they didn't hold. So this, these have been just great to have. So there it is. I think I covered it all. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of fun this year. All right.
You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go on. Go.